y lo que acabo de decir. ¿Anyone? No idea what I just said. That's it. Lisa's gone. So thank you for all for coming to our presentation on Cypher Update, or perhaps Tier Update. Um, so by a show of hands, who has CAS deployed? Okay, just about everybody. How about Shibboleth? Just about everybody. How about CAS and SHIB kind of married up together to do authentication? Maybe about half. How about Grouper? Grouper. Open registry? Open registry, open registry, almost. OK, good. So um, we've often talked about uh, folks who have these components deployed as Cypher schools. And, um, and so I think you're Cypher schools, or maybe you're tier schools now. Um, so I'm Bill Thompson. I am uh, the director of Unicon's IAM practice. Um, prior to joining Unicon, I had 10 plus years in higher education IT, uh, a couple years at Princeton, and a bunch of years at Rutgers. Um, doing the Indian Access Management and portal work and Java development and a bunch of other stuff for a long time. Um, I work for Unicon, who is now 21 years old. Uh, we've been joking that we can all go out and drink now. Um, <laughs> Deep expertise in open source and higher education, um, professional services and open source support. Um, and you can come talk to me about that if you like. Uh, I'd like to talk about the Unicon Advantage. Um, again, uh, domain expertise in higher ed. And uh, you know, you're, you're going to see it. You know, you'll find it's hard not to find Unicon folks at Aperio and in Sky sessions and Internet2 and, and elsewhere. So um, it's a good business model, I think, for higher ed. Okay, so for today, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of why IAM and uh, put all this in the context of Cypher or maybe Tier, um, and then share some updates about what's been going on. So uh, why identity and access management? Why is this important to education and research? And uh, uh, I had the privilege to, to work with a colleague, Earl uh, Bob Morgan, um, and in, in discussing Cypher about a year and a half or maybe two years ago now, um, on one of the mailing lists, um, he, he wrote this in an email thread, and I, and I wrote it down, and I've been using it ever since, because I think it really captures kind of the essence of why I find I am so exciting, particularly in higher education research, because I think it really is about enabling those high-value collaborations um, across thousands of people, disciplines. And, you know, you think about the mission and goals of our collective institutions and, and how those could be uh, better achieved by robust identity and access management. It's a, it's a real impact that we can have. So why Cypher, or maybe Tier? Um, well, uh, this is Latin. This is uh, working together, we can accomplish more. Um, and it's in Latin, so it must be true. Uh, and, uh, and so that was really the start of the Cypher discussion about two years ago or so, and a real recognition that collectively JSIG and Alperio with CAS and Internet2 with Grouper and Kowali um, and uh, various projects and Shibboleth that we've already, collectively we've already accomplished quite a bit. And uh, the idea that if we could work together we could accomplish even more. So one great example of that I think is CAS and SHIB, which a lot of you have uh, already deployed. They really are more perfect together. Um, this is a, a slide, a venerable slide from Internet 2, kind of identity access management in the large, um, where CAS and SHIB kind of slot in for authentication and federation. Um, for enterprise web SSO, there's a lot of different facets and needs that a spec like SAML doesn't actually address, but a product like CAS that's been built for and by higher education does very well. Um, so CAS is great for all those reasons. Um, but it doesn't, uh, it's not everything. And so you also likely have federation requirements. And uh, particularly for the cross organizational collaboration, um, Edgerome, how many folks have Edgerome deployed? Lots of folks have Edgerome, so that's an awesome service. Um, and of course, uh, generally cloud-based services and NetPlus services. So. One of the things that's been really interesting to watch over the last couple of years is how the adoption of cloud-based services and NetPlus has really driven 
uh, Unicon's IAM practice, uh, where folks have come to us and say, hey, real, the realization that IAM is really no longer just a local concern and uh, really need to uh, raise a maturity level by deploying a lot of these uh, systems. So Shiva is great too, right? You're not going to find a more robust SAML implementation. Um, it's by, uh, by, by lar in large part, uh, uh, by far, the largest deployment of uh, Shiva IDP is in the incumbent federation. Um, growing list of cloud based uh, SAML service providers. Um, and of course, net plus and level of insurance. So, um, Shim is great. And so uh, this is a diagram. A lot, of, a lot of folks have gotten a lot of value out of this deployment. And this, I think, is a great example of communities kind of working together, the products working together. So a bunch of resources um, about uh, how those work together and, and some client integrations. And uh, another great thing about CAS, of course, is because it's got such a wide deployment within higher education that it's, it, you'd be hard pressed to find a system that hasn't already been integrated. So another great example, I think, of working together is the Grouper project. Um, and uh, so kind of Grouper starts to fill out this picture a little bit more. And so why Grouper? Well, obviously, authentication and web single sign-on is not enough, right? So we've got lots of apps and lots of groups. There's sort of a maturity arc here as well. So once you kind of square away authentication and identities, then you start thinking about, well, how do I, how can I get people into groups and get them the right access to the right services? Um, Cloud enablement is another another big one. Um, uh, once we've got a decent job of our handle on managing groups, we want to make sure that we can do that in the cloud for cloud services effectively. Um, by and for higher education, Grouper really nails sort of the distributed management use case in ways that probably uh, and I'm not aware of any other commercial product. Um, security, efficiency, and agility. So those are things that probably every IT project has as goals, but I think Grouper really really fits there. Um, like Kaios, Drupal has been integrated and, and is used in a variety of services, like likely ones that you have on, on campus. Um, so here's an example from Duke, and I think this also harks back at enabling those high-value collaborations um, without having IT directly involved. And so they've got this system called Duke Toolkit. And um, basically, it allows folks to make ad hoc uh, collaboration groups. So you can give it a name, and then you can say, OK, well, this group needs access to all these different services. And you just kind of pick and choose from this list. And then it says, OK, well, who's supposed to be part of this group? So you can search for folks. You can upload a CSV and net ID. So you can invite folks. There's lots of ways to add uh, folks to the group in an ad hoc way. And this is all without any IT intervention. Um, and ultimately, there's a, a whole set of roles and permissions and groups that's managed under the covers in their grouper deployment that then is integrated in those downstream systems. Um, and so you think about, um, again, enabling those high value collaborations in a really efficient and agile way. And I think uh, grouper fits the bill there very well. OK, but Cypher had larger dreams, right? We wanted to fill the whole circle, not just these, uh, not just WebSSO and Federation and, and groups and missions. Um, and so early on, there was established a number of work streams um, and identified person registries as a big gap. And uh, <clears throat> there's a couple of evaluations, and actually a really good presentation that Rutgers did about a year and a half ago on the, of their implementation on open registry, and they're actually presenting here um, a little bit later on. Um, also, uh, work within the work streams led to sort of a functional model and framework. And so, uh, you know, this starts to drill down even a little bit more detail of, of from that high level picture about what Cypher and maybe Tier wants uh, to uh, provide as capabilities for a full on uh, IAM framework for higher education and research, including all the capabilities that you might need. So, um, that led to something that we've been calling the IAM test bed. And this was a recognition that, um, hey, we have a lot of the pieces already together. And to get this into a little bit more concrete, a little more palpable, um, perhaps we could work together as a community to deploy some of this stuff in a, in a test scenario and, and show how the different pieces come together. So a lot of this has already been deployed. Um, 
And yeah, so uh, there's a wiki in the Internet Two Spaces called I Am Testbed. So if you're interested in, in that work and or participating in that work, I encourage you to go there. There's a, a mailing list you can sign up for. There's a, um, a GitHub repo that we're managing um, tickets in um, that you might want to follow. And uh, Keith Hazelton, who's sitting right over there, and the Red Shirt would be a good guy to go talk to about the IAM testbed as well. Um, so one of the things that we did, so I want to kind of switch to a little, a little bit of a demo. One of the things we did was uh, deploy TAS and SHIB, of course. And um, so uh, I wanted to demo one of the out-of-the-box CAS features. Um, so everybody, everyone knows that I can log in directly to CAS. And so that actually did the bounce to SHIB IDP and then back to the SHIBless service provider. And which is really just kind of reflecting the attributes back. So if I look for ETPN, I see that I am WGT1 at IAM testbed.org. That's cool. And then if I do it again, so one of the nice things about CAS lately is its support for OAuth and OpenID. And there's been a lot of talk about how to incorporate social identities or outsource authentication. And so CAS has the ability to do external or front channel authentication to Google, Google and LinkedIn and, and other folks. So, so here's an example of that. <coughs> and it just so happens that I have two-factor um, enabled on my Google account. So it's kind of an interesting way to get a, a two-factor kind of an opt-in uh, mechanism uh, somewhere on here. I have, oh, there it is. <coughs> so I'm back to the service provider. If I search for EPPN again, you see the service still sees me as the same Bill Thompson with the same EPPN. So the fact that I used Google for front channel or XOR authentication didn't change who didn't really change my identity in terms of how what the in terms of what the service um, is provided, which is a little bit different than perhaps some of the discussions around SAML to our social SAML gateways. This is a little bit different approach. Anyway, this is deployed on the IAM test beds. This is all running on that infrastructure, and uh, which is pretty cool. So you can get access to this and play with this and try it out if you like. A uh, bunch of other stuff already deployed there. Um, which again is kind of really, really this test bed, um, and the idea is to try to fill out that whole circle, right, with really concrete implementations, and to and to find the gaps and to fill them as we go forward. Okay. Yes, I am test bed. So that brings me to tier. Um, who's heard of tier? Show sure, our hands. Who's heard of tier? Or just a few. Okay, good. Um, so, tier is trust in identity and education and research, and it is a new emerging initiative uh, out of Internet Two, and uh, largely with the same, with similar goals of the original discussions around Cipher, and that is uh, mainly to. Uh, coordinate, incorporate efforts to, to work together to accomplish more um, in response uh, to really insufficient options for meeting identity and access management requirements for higher education and research. Right? So if you think about enabling those high value collaborations that we were talking about, um, I think it's pretty clear to a lot of folks, certainly it's clear to me that um, the commercial marketplace really is not in a good place to address those needs. And so TIER is a new initiative to um, kind of carry the torch a bit at, of some of the goals that Cypher had already um, established. Um, within, within Internet 2, there's also discussions of um, TIER not only having locally deployed products like CAS and SHIB and Cooper, um, but perhaps also um, uh, engendering uh, cloud-based IAM service offerings. So it's be interesting to see how that evolves. 
Um, Tier is still kind of in its hatchling phases, and I understand that there's a goal for uh, it to be the program to be more finalized and to have some kind of announcement at Educause National uh, later this year. So I encourage you to reach out to Internet Two folks or Common folks <coughs> or Cipher folks if you're interested in, in that discussion and, and what that might uh, turn out to be. Uh, but I'm pretty optimistic about. Uh, about that and, uh, and excited that Internet 2 and Common are really kind of expanding their portfolio um, beyond Federation, because as we all know, it's not just about Federation. So um, so there are a number of sessions for the rest of the week. Um, that really are related to this, this topic of Cypher and or tier and working together to be able to operate IIM for higher education research. Um, these are not all the sessions in the track, but these, I think, are the ones that are most directly related to Cypher. Um, that will get into a lot of the detail of current state of the projects and some interesting deployments. So I encourage you to attend those and, and ask questions there. Um, and. Uh, Right, so that is the end of my comments. <laughs> if you can't tell, I've got a little bit of a head cold and uh, and a little bit of land sickness. So, <clears throat> but I'd be happy to answer any questions or entertain any discussion. It's a small group here, so we can. Uh, yeah, I have one question. So I guess with this tier thing moving to Internet Two, does that mean that the whole cyber funding model that was being pushed for the past two years is now asleep? I would say that's the safe thing. That is, if the funding comes through, it will probably come through whatever tier turns into. And so, yes, that that's probably the biggest uh, reason for the, the dash through this angle. Is that we didn't want to uh, get away from that particular funding. So, I think this list here gives you a good sense of the fact that the burden continues and the test band is kind of like. Capstone, if you will, of the existing pieces, and they can be put together. Resources will do on sure, um, and it allows to get in requirements that are um, on there already. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, we have this kind of bridge period between the top of the, of the upper top of the folks. So. Yeah, I did want to mention one other thing. So, so I think that's a really good point. Yeah, so it definitely is an evolution, I think, of, of Cypher. And, uh, and I think perhaps more will be clear towards the EDUCALS presentation about what exactly folks have in mind about how things will move forward. But um, um, there's always been kind of like these two tracks, right? So there's a big funding model that folks have talked about, um, as well as the kind of on the ground progress, both individually at the projects, but also in the working groups where folks have come together across projects to, to work on various things. And I think um, the Cypher API uh, framework work is a great example of that, um, you know, which is an effort to kind of put together um, a framework, a restful framework, which Keith is going to be talking about later on, which is one of the presentations. Um, so there has been actual work all along the way. Um, so kind of these two tracks. And I think kind of the bottom up and in project uh, work will continue. And somehow will kind of realign and and evolve and fit in with the overall tier uh, program. <coughs> so what is tier? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe maybe a, a more I don't know that anybody in this room actually has the answer. So far, tier seems like it's coming from I2, right? And one of the things about Cipher was it started when some Kuali people, some I2 people, and some, I guess at the time, JSIC people sat down and said, hey, we should do something. But I think it was really the Kuali people saying, hey, we don't know what we're doing to help us, but then it turned into we should do something. Um, so it seems like that is being lost in order to hear <coughs> Or am I missing? I'm not sure. Um, I, I think that it's uh, to be seen. I think that 
whatever happens with tier and whatever had happened with Cypher, I think that sort of this, this bottom-up, evolving, emerging, you know, open source, at any next event, and architecture and stack continues apace. And um, so how the various original participants, Quali, Jason, now Purio, Internet2, um, kind of relate or allow was always the big cipher, the big cipher question in any case. And so I think that persists in some, in some sense. Um, I'm certainly no expert in tier, and having been involved in any of the, the planning, so I really can't speak for what it is or, or how that might uh, <laughs> but, uh. So it's a different way of asking the question, would tier to be successful, what would, what would we all be doing? What would we have? If tier were successful, what would we have? And like, that's a great question, and I think, at least in my mind, I could also say if Cypher were successful, or at least in my, my thinking, it's the same question. Right. And, um, and again, I think it harks back to that quote from Arnold Ba, which is you know, enabling high value collaborations across the disciplines and, and, and really a recognition across all the institutions and all the research of that IAM is no longer a local concern. Right? It's no longer a local concern. It's a real discipline. Um, it needs real resources, and we will not be successful unless we work together. Um, out of that, I think, will be great open source software by for higher education. Um, I think uh, a lot of guidance. I mean, and then we've got examples, right? I mean, the SAML spec, um, edge person. Um, I think the, the work here about the Cypher API framework is great work. I think there will be more things like this, more guidance. Um, I could imagine uh, even closed source commercial software vendors, perhaps, figuring, hey, maybe there's a market here that makes sense for us, or maybe there's great work here that we should leverage. So I could, I could imagine at some point that there would be uh, closed source offerings that might plug into the framework that would, would enable the ultimate goals. Uh, there's also this notion of some kind of cloud-based IAM services offering, maybe coming out of the internet too, and commonness. It was fuzzy in my mind, but um, I think that would just be a piece of enabling success, not success or something. Yeah, I, my sense is one of the things to watch and understand better where what tier really is when it comes up is <clears throat> the relation to the net plus energy. That is, is it more? I've gotten a new sense. And, and really, nobody that, that I know has vision as the fact that if I don't talk too much about two reasons, so it flux, and so a lot of guessing. But I, I do get the sense that there's a probably a flavor of it that's really about facilitating the cloud service provider integrations with campus infrastructure. Um, and so <coughs> that's, I would say, different flavor of focus. Yeah, but I guess the other general point I'd make kind of back to Ben's thing is um, <clears throat> these discussions are going on at, at Internet 2 and at, at Incon and Steering Group and uh, there's like, an openness, I think, to input. And uh, I think that's point is a good one, right? This was initially envisioned as a collaborative thing of large scale consortiums. Are we just saying that's an all the truth is that we may just whatever we'll just get um, I would say if there are people who care about that and think of it was and continues to be valuable on the style of organization, we should get there and put plus that they know on our person who's here and they have some subcommittees on this program so maybe the step would be that who those folks are, so I, so I think you can invest in them. I think it's very much a flux, but I have my, just look at who's, who are the folks saying, well, wait, we'll tell you that. <coughs> um, so do you, do you know who those people actually are? Do they have a right name? Well, I, it, um, 
I would say you look first to Shell, Wagner, and a recent Shell recently hired this associate vice president, uh, Steve Zappi. Those are probably the apexes of thinking about this, but again, they're, they have a lot of potential steering to them. Because I think, again, this is the sense that the common well, has some history in the background, and so the kind of folks are from the connection, collection within uh, that space, they tend to turn to ice. So it's, it's not just those, those shell and steel. Uh, so, um, Steve Carvey and Brown is the chair of the common steering. So you know, it's funny. Another another way that I'm perhaps optimistic of how things may may play out is that I think the the, the core part about architecture and collaboration, sort of discussion, uh, and taking kind of that vision for it, I think is something that's here to do well. Um, at the same time, you know, the, the various projects that we you know, talking about has and should and so forth. Well, those are essentially independent projects, right? So it's, I don't, it's hard to imagine those being you know, kind of folded under tier in any kind of real sense, which is kind of, so you know, I think those projects and so that bottom up activity will continue. Um, and so how that relates into or how tier supports those, I think there's still yet to be seen, but I think it's one of the really important questions. To dwell a little more on the, it's not just uh, you know how does the state of Ontario fit in, but it's also how does the international community fit in. Now, Cypher did a poor to mediocre job in international outreach and a poor job on execution. I'm not sure Internet 2 has a very good track record with it either, but um, at least figuring out if there's a, something to be considered as to your formalized. Probably worth doing that as well. Again, for the wrong people. <laughs> I, I also am part of the Yeah, so I, I don't, again, I'm not, I'm not involved in, sort of in any of the tier planning, um, but I am aware that they have a target for Edge Cause National to have some kind of uh, sense of program or announcement or something. So I have to at least imagine that there's going to be some period of. Outreach and input and so forth. Um, so probably become a scenario where we're going to committee and maybe the place to start. Once you're interested in that. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. Uh, for